So here is the question that you need to answer below today. Should anyone be denied communion for silent protest while at mass? Should someone be denied communion because they are wearing a rainbow mask? And yes, the kind of rainbow mask that supports the LGBTQIA community. So here's the scoop. We're gonna read an article that was recently released by the National Catholic Reporter that talked about a Denver woman who was denied communion because of wearing a rainbow mask. Now, you know, life is never that simple and the answers to this question are never that simple. But I think that what I start to realize about myself is that, guys, I love talking about social issues. Oh man, I love it. And what I love most is taking these issues that plague us within the Catholic Church and then putting it before you guys and seeing what your opinions are on these matters. Because here's the thing, society is moving so fast right now and so far away from anything that we've seen that is familiar or traditional in within the church or within our just social standings that it's important for us to speak about these things, to be open and have conversations about what we believe and whether or not the church needs to bend on things. What do you, the greater community of Catholics out there have to say about this? Oh boy, we're gonna get into it. So I have the article, we're gonna read through it. I'm gonna stop every now and, and, and then and just give my opinions on what's going on. I love this, my platform is like the Hunger Games, okay? Uh, this is the Hunger Games and I'm F.E. Trinket. I'm going into the districts. I'm gathering up the folks that are gonna go ahead out there in the arena and fight it out. And you guys are the folks that I'm gathering up. I'm just sitting back here like I'm in the Capitol chilling, okay? Chilling in the cut while the rest of y'all duke it out. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead. Let's get into the article that we have from the National Catholic Reporter and talk about this right now. So this article was released a few days ago or either it was released today. I don't know the date. It was released within the last few hours <laughs> talking about this. So let's go ahead and read it off. Denver area Catholic woman says priests denied them communion over rainbow mass. Oh boy, if it were only so simple. So the article focuses on a woman named Susan Doty. It's either Doty or Dottie, but I believe it's Doty, Susan Doty. And we're starting off with a little story about how she remembers communion when she was a kid. We don't care about that. Let's get to the let's go get to the meat of the article. She's 81 years old. The Denver, Colorado Catholic was one of two women who say a priest denied them communion when they wore rainbow mass to a February 11th mass at All Souls Parish in Inglewood, a city just south of Denver. I was trying not to cry as I walked back to my pew, Dodie told NCR. I couldn't believe what just happened. Dodie, a former Regis University professor who holds a doctorate in scripture and a master's degree in theology, said the rainbow face coverings were intended to show empathy and compassion for Maggie Barton, who the Denver Archdiocese fired from her teaching job last month at All Souls School after learning she was in a same-sex relationship. Oh boy, did you guys hear about that one? We'll talk about that one in another video. Our purpose was not to be disruptive in any way because it's the mass, said Doty. But when I pulled down my mass and held out my hands for communion, the priest shook his head no. Now this is the this is the woman here that we're talking about in the article. As you can see, she's an 81 year old woman, lifelong Catholic. The priest was All Souls Parochial Vicar, Doty said. Is it Vicar or is it Viker? Vicar, Vicar, Viker, Viker. You know, listen, I'm really bad with pronouncing some things sometimes. But anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. The priest was All Souls' parochial Vicar, Vicar, Vicar. Anyway, <laughs> Doty said, y'all, I'm crazy. NCR contacted the parish for comment and was directed to the archdiocese. In response to several questions, Kelly Clark, Archdiocesan spokesperson emailed NCR a statement previously, sh previously shared with secular news outlets. Now get this child, this is great. Anyone who considers themselves a lifelong Catholic knows that the communion line is not the place for any political statement, especially when such statements highlight that the person is not in communion with Christ. If anyone believes they were wrongly denied communion, we encourage them to speak to the pastor of their church who, unlike secular media, is better equipped to answer their concerns 
and help them to be brought back into communion. Now, the article goes off to talk about some canon law, and we'll talk about that right now. Canon 912 of the Church's Code of Canon Law states that any baptized person not prohibited by law can and must be admitted to Holy Communion. Canon 915 says those obstinately preserving in manifest grave sin are not to be admitted to Holy Communion. Now, we're going to take a little bit of a hold and a pause here because there's more to this article that I definitely want to go ahead and get back to. But... I want to just break down a couple of things that we just read. So essentially what, what's happening here is you have a woman who stood in protest, in clear protest about something that recently happened within the, which in, within the archdiocese at the school. And she wanted to show her support for a teacher that was fired recently because of her sexual orientation. Now, Here's a question I want you to go ahead and answer in the comments below, but not yet because there's a little bit more we got to cover, but I want you to keep this in the back of your head. Does the priest have a right to go ahead and deny communion to anyone? Does a priest have a right to say, you know what? No, you cannot receive the body of Christ. No, you cannot. You are not in good standing to go ahead and receive our Lord. Do you think that the priest had a right to do that? Now, this kind of reminds me of the whole thing that happened with Nancy Pelosi, right? And she being denied communion by the archbishop of her parish. I think it was the archbishop of like Sacramento, the entire city. She couldn't receive communion nowhere, okay? But she goes to the Vatican, mind you, not even covering her head as a Catholic. When people go to the Vatican and cover their heads as non-Catholics, but that's a whole other thing. But she went and defiantly, stood there and received communion at the Vatican at the hands of the Pope. Mind blowing, right? Absolutely insane that it seems like today, no matter what, we are at a point where we make up our own rules. If the priest or if the parish or if the diocese, archdiocese says that, hey, you're in a state of excommunication until you can repent and bring yourself back into communion with the church, that doesn't matter anymore. And it makes me think about how so many Catholics nowadays do not believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ and the utter respect that we should have when we are at Mass, we're in the presence of the host and at the Eucharist and receiving the Eucharist as well. So the question is, did the priest have a right to do this or was she in the right to be able to stand up for someone that in a, in a cause that she cared about, knowing where her heart stood, feeling that she was in complete, like not in grave sin or anything like that and have the right to receive. What are your thoughts? But hold up, don't say anything just yet. We're gonna go ahead and read on because there's a lot more in this article that we have to cover. But listen, stop right here for a moment. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You do not wanna miss these conversations. We are heating it up over here. I don't hold back. Okay, listen, you go over here, we just gonna talk about the stuff. So make sure that you go ahead and subscribe, hit your bell notification so that way you don't miss anything when I release new videos or any of that stuff. And if you really wanna support the channel, please join as a member. I've got special videos there, all kinds of really great stuff, but it helps me to get forward with this ministry, keep things going, keep these lights on, honey. So go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and join as a member for some exclusive content. Now, honeys, we gotta go on, let's continue with the rest of this article, because I'm telling you, you're about to have your minds blown away here because those, those of you that are the, of the traditional elk, y'all better hold on. Here's the thing I gotta say about the National Catholic Reporter. This is not a, a paper that I read very often or a news source that I read very often. But what I will say is that I went back because of that to look at their mission statement. And they are very much about being in the spirit of Vatican II. Now that's what their website says. And they're all about social justice and all that other stuff. So you already know that they're going to lean a little bit more to the progressive side when it comes to how they cover these articles. So I want you to keep that in mind as we read through this. But let's go ahead and continue on to see what else they have to say. Elizabeth Sweeney Block, an associate professor of Christian ethics at St. Louis University, believes wearing a rainbow mask was a quote unquote quiet, respectful form of solidarity with Maggie Barton. It is difficult to see how one could classify the wearing of masks on this one occasion as obstinately preserving in manifest grave sin, said Block, who is writing a book on conscience, social sin, and moral agency. If in their consciences, these mask-wearing women 
believed they were being faithful to their relationship with God, how can anyone argue otherwise? How did the priests know their intentions? There is no prohibition against wearing rainbow attire at mass. Now, this is where social justice and our times today meet the teachings of the church head on and cause a major, major problem and unrest. Because here's the thing, you guys, she's saw it standing in solidarity of a woman, of a person, of a human being in this world, when you should be standing in solidarity of Christ at the time of the Eucharist. See, for me, I don't care what side of the aisle you stand on, when we are standing in line together in communion, being that you that we're gonna all assume that we're in a state of grace, that's a whole other thing, okay? But at least if we're in mass, standing side by side, I don't care what side of the aisle you are, I don't care if you are a Republican, if you are a Democrat, if you are a liberal, conservative, in between, libertarian, I don't care because we're not here for you. You're not here for me. We're not even there for the priest. We are there for Jesus Christ. Looking at that cross, seeing what he did for us, knowing that we're there to celebrate solemnly and receive him in the sacrifice of the mass. That is what we're there for, for the Eucharist. So your protest and your feelings and your silent support of another human being should not be the focus of the mass. And that I feel is where she went wrong. Now, the other thing is that when you are doing silent protest against the church, you are being a Protestant. You are being a Protestant. You are protesting against where, where the church stands and her beliefs. Therefore, you are a Protestant. So how different are you than anyone else, right? Really, I told you, we're getting into the weeds now. And these are the things that we got to talk about openly and have discussions, civil discussions, respectable discussions, so we can make, move forward with our faith and the church. But we're not done. Let's get back to the article. So this is the woman right here. This is Elizabeth. What is her name? Let's take a look again. Her name is Elizabeth Sweeney Block. And this is the woman that was just making the statements, the St. Louis professor. Let's go on and continue to see what she says. Ultimately, the Eucharist should never be weaponized, period, Block said. When did we become so perfect that we can judge others' faithfulness and ability to receive the Eucharist? The Eucharist unifies and heals. This is where a lot of people go wrong when you start to espouse more progressive beliefs on the church. The church has always had a very strong stance about the Eucharist. The church has always had a st strong stance about when you receive, how you receive. The church has always been like that. But the thing is that man corrupts. Man corrupts, and that is the problem, right? We don't want to be in communion with the church in the way that we need to, to receive Christ in grace because it's hard. It's hard to do that today because you want to be good. You want to be charitable. You want to be altruistic. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that or feel that in your heart as a Christian, of course, but there are rules to this game. There are guidelines. There are guardrails that are in place. Christ told us we have to choose, choose the world or choose him. Where are you making your choice? It's not about doing things because they feel good, because society told you it's feel good and it's fair, because the road to heaven is paved narrowly, while the road to damnation is paved widely. Which way are you going to choose? Oh boy, am I firing you up? Write this, don't, don't comment just yet, we not done. Okay, I know you wanna comment, hold up. Hold up, let's go into the rest of this. Let's go into the rest of this. Most discussions around denying communion in recent years have been related to Catholic politicians who publicly affirm legal abortion with some bishops deciding such individuals cannot receive the sacrament. Whether it involves a pro-choice politician or women supporting a fired teacher, denial of communion disrespects the person's conscience. Whether it involves a pro-choice politician or women supporting a fired teacher, denial of communion disrespects the person's conscience, which the church teaches is sacred and inviolable, Block said. Now here's the kicker, okay? Get this, get this. Listen, she wasn't alone in this, okay? So Dodie, 81 years old, Jill Moore, 64 years old, Cindy Rubenhoff, 48 years old, and Sally Odenheimer, 71, wore masks with multicolored horizontal stripes to the mass at All Souls Church. Odenheimer had invited the friends to wear LGBTQ supportive attire to the mass after she learned of Barton's firing. Their intention, said Doty, now listen to this. Their intention, said Doty, was to support Barton and members of the parish and school who have rallied around the teacher. 
She wanted them to know that they weren't alone and that we were there with them, she said. Now, let's take a look at this. There's a, there's a lot here. This is why I want you to hold off on your commenting because there is a lot here. I did a video a, a little while ago, a little weeks back. I'll go ahead and put the video right here in the information circle right over here, all right? And you can look below in the comments or in the description to see the video. But I talked about a conversation I had with a 91 year old uh, parishioner at my church and how she really feels that she has a pulse on what the young people want and what the young people want is more freedom in the church, more progressiveness in the church. They want the church to change their stance on abortion and contraception. They want more liberalism in the church. And I looked at her and I said, well, you don't know enough young people. I didn't say it like this child, but I kind of did. I was like, um, with all due respect, you don't know enough young people in the church because the fact of the matter is that the largest growing body in the Catholic church right now among the millennials and those who are like the, the late Z's, like the Zennials, millennials and all that stuff, the folks having the children and bringing up their kids in the church, they are all traditionalists and they're attending the Latin mass themselves, their married spouses and their kids in this growing Catholic families. These Latin mass churches are booming. Guys, I go to Latin mass out here in California and one of the parishes that I go to is wall to wall packed with people, families and everything. And these are young people. Okay. These are not old people that are about to head out and hightail out to the Lord. Okay. These are young people. And the fact of the matter is even on the spectrum of society in a whole, Younger people are pushing back against this highly liberal agenda, the highly progressive agenda. Younger people in today's society, in the secular world, are pushing back. My nephew, he's a, he's a zenial, like a, a Z zenial, okay? I'm more in the X zenials. I'm between the, the Generation X and the, and the Millennials. I'm on the cusp there, okay? So I look at both generations. I'm like, y'all both crazy, okay? But I really relate more to the Millennials because that's where I'm closest to in age, right? But my, my nephew, he's a Z zenial, okay? Born in 96. And I'm so blown away by this kid because he is not into social media. He's not into social media. He doesn't have any profiles. He's not into like today's culture. He pushes a lot of it away because he's just not, it just doesn't resonate with him. The, his generation, the, the Xenials disease, right? That generation is having less premarital sex than any generation before them less than the millennials, less than the generation X, less than the boomers, right? So many of the younger people today are pushing away today's culture because they're seeing how poison it is. It is. They're seeing how the people they know are depressed. Families are falling apart. They have no hope in their own future, right? Now, why do I keep saying this? Because look at the ages of the women that are involved in this. It's older women and it's women at that. It's not even men. It's women trying to go ahead and push their agenda on the church here. Now, ladies, please don't get mad at me. Listen, you go take a look at your boomer brothers and sisters in Christ or in blood and tell them to get their stuff together. Because look, y'all the ones, I'm just going to say it. Look, y'all the free love and generation that was up at the Woodstock, that was up in the protest in the 1960s and 70s with the free, free, you know, whatever y'all was doing when pushing all these agendas forward. And my generation and the younger kids, we are the products of this experiment and the experiment is failing. It just is. And we're tired of it. And that's what it is. So you have this older generation of Catholic women in particular who are pushing these ideals forward. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to say what I feel. Do you think that I'm wrong? Go ahead to the comments and tell me. If you're a younger person and you want to see the church move more liberally, why? Because here's the thing. We cannot change the word of God. We can have compassion. Now, I'm not saying to go out and be a jerk, okay? You have compassion for people. You support people in their humanity and their dignity. But we cannot placate and we cannot be in a position where we start accepting things that go against the dogma of the church and just the entire Bible. What are we doing at that point, right? They came to protest. They came to stand in solidarity of a person that is not Jesus Christ at the mass. It wasn't about her then, and this stuff should never have been bought. Then you want to protest, go on and protest after mass. Go on and get your girls together. Y'all wear your rainbow mask. Y'all go ahead and stand on the steps and, and holler and scream and hoot. But that's not what you bring to church. I don't want to see it. Nobody wants to see it, okay? Especially if we know that's what you're doing. 
but we ain't done yet. Let's get back to the article because now we're going to go ahead into the nitty gritty of what was happening with this teacher uh, in the in the Catholic school. Barton taught technology at All Souls for the past six years and said she lost her job January 26 after she was told the Denver Archdiocese, headed up by Archbishop Samuel Aquila, had obtained a photo of her kissing a woman, according to the Denver Post. In a statement issued by the Archdiocese, it said that it was necessary to conclude the teacher's employment because she did not honor the commitments she agreed to in her contract. All teachers in the Archdiocese schools sign a contract at the start of each year, said the statement, and in it, they pledge to personally exemplify the characteristics of Catholic living, which includes refraining from taking any public position or conducting himself or herself in a manner that is contrary to the teachings of the Catholic Church. Block said Catholic schools often are well within their legal rights to terminate teachers whose behaviors appear to violate church teachings. Now, this is from that 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 professor, the St. Louis professor who was speaking something else a minute ago, but let's see what she has to say. It is clear that Catholic schools, oh child, she done went off the edge. Here we go. It is clear that Catholic schools pick and choose though, focusing primarily on sexuality and gender, she said. Morally, this is highly problematic. The message it sends to our children is that we do not welcome the marginalized. Instead, we continue to discriminate against and exclude anyone who differs from us. Now, this lady be going off the chain, child. She be going off. She be doing a little too much over here, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. So let me tell you a little story. So I know, I know of a situation that was alerted to me by a couple of friends of mine a few years ago. Um, of a Catholic school high school, a Catholic high school teacher, um, someone that I that I know very well, and this Catholic school high school, this Catholic high school teacher, went to the high school in which she taught at, right, and she ended up getting pregnant, and she was unmarried. Now this was going back to the early to mid two thousands, okay, and she had to end up marrying the guy that got her pregnant. She was in a relationship with him, obviously, for a long time, but she actually had got had to get married to him like after the fact because she would lose her job if she held, you know, had the baby full term and and the, what she signed a contract with the Catholic Church. Now, as far as I know, I mean, that's normal within the church because first of all, not only are you fornicating, but you're you, you got knocked up, girl. Okay, you got knocked up. I mean, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to be a little funny, but it's the truth, right? How are you gonna teach in a Catholic all girls high school? You get pregnant. What kind of example are you setting for the girls in the school? When we supposed to be learning how to be good Catholic school girls? Not gonna work, right? So she ended up getting married and I believe she's still married to this day and, and you know, had a kid and all that other stuff, has more kids and, and whatever, great for her. But when you sign a contract and you are working within a religious organization, you know the rules. So why are you so surprised when they actually enforce the rules? But I find it's really interesting with identity politics today because the first thing that this professor from the St. Louis University said is that, oh, it has to do with like inclusivity and you're marginalizing people and you're not letting people feel good. I mean, come on, identity politics again, right? Identity politics. But we already know what the church's stance is on homosexuality. We already know what the church's stance is on fornication. And to be honest with you, to me, it's the same sin, child. We can talk about that. How fornication between straight people is the same sin as homosexuality because guess what? Y'all all not in no kind of union. You ain't married and you all out there doing the deed with each other. And listen, I ain't got no sympathy for you because I'm in the same boat. You and I are doing the same sin if I'm going out there getting my, getting my you know, groove on with somebody, okay? So we all gotta be chased. How about that? Oh, wow, the, the narrow road to salvation. Oh boy, right? So I just think it's a bunch of hogwash because if you know what the Catholic Church stands for and you know part of your job is all about being in lockstep with the church and exemplifying what Catholic living looks like, then I'm sorry. Like, you have to make that choice about whether or not that is the environment you can work in. That may not be the place for you. And those are the hard conversations we need to have. Now, here's something that a lot of you will either, you know, um, take offense to or you might agree with. And here's the thing. 
I want you to remain respectful in the comments because the things that we're talking about are very triggering. It's very sensitive. And we don't want to display being uncharitable to people because there are going to be people who watch content in Catholic media that are struggling with homosexuality, that are struggling as straight people with fornication and porn and all that stuff. They're struggling out there. They're struggling to stay on the righteous path and they have all these vices. And we want to be able to be sensitive enough to speak about things respectfully, even if we don't agree with it and be able to get our points across. So don't be too mean. Okay. Just think about someone who may be struggling with this and they're trying to find an answer, right? Well, let's go ahead and go on with the rest of this article so we can talk about this in the comments because boy, this is just some stuff. All right. This is some stuff. So continuing on with the article. Block said it also teaches children that the most important thing about a person is their sexual orientation. Barton taught at this school for six years, a substantial length of time, she said. To fire her renders unimportant the good of community relationship and solidarity that ought to be front and center in a Catholic school. Now, here is where we start having issues with actual church doctrine, because anyone that understands what's going on would say, hey, you know, we're not saying that she can't live in community and she cannot be someone who is an important part of the community just because of her sexual orientation. What they are clearly saying is that because she is acting upon that and she's not living in the way of what Christ has set for us by example, right? that we cannot accept that. So it's not really teaching children that that's not tolerable, but it's teaching them instead that there are consequences to every action. The same thing with these mask wearers. There are consequences to your actions. You can protest all you want, but here's the fact. The fact of the matter is that you protesting says something about your beliefs and whether or not you stand in solidarity with Jesus Christ. And there are consequences to that action, consequences that you may not like, but they are there. So like I said, this is a very touchy subject. And most of all, again, I just want to hear your thoughts on this. Let's go ahead and talk about this. What do you think the church needs to do with this particular issue? How do we move forward in a way that allows people to know that they are welcomed in their parishes? They are welcomed in the church. But in order for them to be in full communion with Christ in the way that we understand that this is going to be a hard road, that there are going to be some sacrifices that they're going to have to choose to make, some changes in their lifestyle that they're going to have to choose to make that they may not be aware of or really fight against, right? How do we show as much compassion as we can to say, hey, you are welcome, but listen, there are rules to this. Go ahead and post your comments below because I want to hear them. Like, again, be very respectful. But share your opinions. We're here to hear all sides of it, whether you agree with me or not. Be respectful and share. Now, if you are really interested to see what I had to say about that 91-year-old woman child, you've got to watch this video right over here. Go on, click here, and I will see you over there. <laughs>